All right, I'll let you guys pick out of 54 through 75 multiples of three, take a look at those and tell me which ones you want to do here. I'll keep it up there until you tell me. Actually, I think the problem that I did with you might be harder than any of these. Well, maybe there's a couple, not many. So somebody unmute and tell me a problem you'd like to do with me out of those. Number 69. 69. Hilarious number. Good choice. 66. Okay. Sixty-one. Uh, Sixty-one isn't one of the ones that we're doing. But 60 is if you want to do something kind of similar. Yeah, do 60. Okay. All right, so 60, 66, and 69 are the ones that we're doing. We're gonna go nice and slow. Okay, so the first step with every single one of these problems, and other teachers don't do it this way, but I think it's easy is just to switch it into X and Y's. Do you guys think it's easy to switch it into X and Y's? I think it helps. Yeah. Okay, so let's start doing that. So cotangent, if you look at the front of your unit circle, is X over Y. So I'm going to write X squared over Y squared because this is cotangent squared. And then one plus, and tangent is y squared over x squared. All right, now we can do this two different ways. We could add these together first and then multiply this in, or we could just distribute. Maybe distributing might be a little easier. So I'm going to distribute to both. So x squared over y squared times 1 is just, well, just x squared over y squared plus. On the top, if I take these two fractions times each other, I get x squared y squared on this one. And on the bottom, I get x squared, y squared again. Okay, so somebody tell me something I can do with this fraction. Make it one. You just cancel it out and make it one. Exactly. That This one's just one. Okay, so now I've got x squared over y squared plus one. Now I could add them together and find a common denominator. That's definitely possible. But I think I'm just gonna rewrite it back as um, this stuff. So X over Y is what? Cotangent. So I'm gonna write cotangent squared theta plus one here. Uh, 
All right, look at the back of your unit circle and somebody tell me a formula you think we're going to use. One plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. Exactly. So we're going to use that one right here. The one plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. And the answer is cosecant squared theta. And that's it. Any questions on 60? Cool, let's try 66. So 66 is one minus sine squared negative theta. Glad you asked about this one. And one plus cotangent squared negative theta. Okay, so let's make this a little easier. Let's get rid of those negative thetas right away. Black. Okay, so if I look at the back of my unit circle, the sine, the sine of negative theta right here is the same thing as negative, the sine of actual theta. So I'm just going to rewrite this top of this problem. But instead of a negative out front, I'm going to change that to a positive because I know that it switches the sign. So the sine of negative theta is the same thing as negative sine of theta. And if I put a negative negative, I get positive. And the bottom cotangent of negative theta. It looks like it switches it, huh? So that would be one plus the cotangent of theta. All right. So now we're going to simplify. Uh, now we've gotten rid of those negatives. So now we're going to simplify as far as we can. So we're going to do that thing that we did in the practice one where we're going to split up the top and the bottom. And I'm going to rewrite it as y. So this is 1 plus, call it 1 over 1 plus um, what? y squared over 1. And this one is 1 over 1 plus x squared over y squared. Okay, so this one, if we combine them, we've still got what one over y squared. That's not bad. And this one we've got, um, I'm gonna have to change that to y squared over y squared. Why do you change it? Why do I change this one? Yeah. So that I can put them together, like to find a common denominator. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna change that into multiplying.
Okay. So what's y squared plus x squared? One. One. So I'm going to make this into one. That gets rid of all the fractions. That's nice. So then I'm left with y squared times one plus y squared. Which is the same thing as y squared plus y to the fourth. So we can call that sine squared theta plus sine theta to the fourth. There's actually another way to do this problem, which I'm not going to do right now, but I will talk about quick. And that's by using the Pythagorean identities, uh, that one minus sine squared on your front page. Do you see how that looks like this right here? So I could have changed that one into the cosine of um, negative theta to begin with, cosine squared of negative theta. Um, and I could have changed this one that one plus cotangent squared, which is in the back of your unit circle, to cosecant squared negative theta, and then simplified from there. So two different ways to do that problem, but we're good for here. That was the hardest one on the homework, I think. Good choice. All right, the 69, last one we're doing. Sixty nine is secant theta plus cosecant theta times cosine theta minus sine theta. All right, so first step with all of these is that we're going to change them into x's and y's first. So this is one over x plus 1 over y times 1 over x, or sorry, just x minus y. So how do you do that? How do you multiply two parentheses like that with each other? Distribute. Or foil, I guess. Right, foil or a box. I'm going to make it a big box so I can write fractions in here. All right, one over x times x over one. What would that be? One. One, or I mean, you could write it as x over x first and then realize, oh, that's the same thing as one. It looks like this one is gonna be x over y, these two. And these two are going to be negative y over x. The last ones will be negative y over y, which is the same thing as negative one. All right, so if I put them together, I think the one and the negative one are gonna cancel out. And then we're left with x over y minus y over x. which if we put back into um, 
uh, like um, trig functions, what's x over y? Cotangent. Cotangent. And y over x? Tangent. Tangent. So I think the hardest part about these problems is not switching it into X and Y's, but more like, in my opinion, and you guys can tell me if you agree or disagree with me. In my opinion, I think the hardest part about this is knowing when you're done. Because it's not like, it's not like you get an answer like five or something where you're like, I did it five, you know, like now it's like, oof, am I done? Who knows what's going on here? Um, how would you guys feel about we're still gonna do this homework assignment today, which means you've got what, like five more problems to try, right? How would you feel about tomorrow? Um, just kind of like doing this lesson again, almost like going over it one more time because the looks on your faces are showing me that you're really uncertain about this, and which makes sense to me. So why don't you raise your hand digitally if you think we need to spend another day on this lesson? Okay, almost all of you. All right, so what we're going to do is how about for your homework, um, I still want you to try these six problems and we're gonna talk about them at the beginning of class. And then I'm gonna add maybe like four more problems to the mix and let you have another go at it, but no new lesson tomorrow. We'll just kind of like give you some time to practice see if it works for you. And then don't worry if you get all of them wrong tomorrow, no pressure, no problem. We'll fix it, we'll work together. I'll add maybe like four more problems to the assignment. So try to do these five problems tonight and 31. And we'll talk about those tomorrow. And then I'll add a few more problems tomorrow and I'll let you go. So tomorrow's assignment's gonna be super short, just added to this one with no new stuff. Does that seem reasonable? Okay, all right. So. You can head out for the day um, once you're done writing down these notes. Stop recording.